Today I'm talking about three trumpet judgments in the book of Revelation that bring horrific tribulation upon the earth and why that's important for us as believers to understand, even in the days that we're living in. I'm talking about Iran's new president that they call the hangman of Tehran, a hardline president, very important for the United States and Israel. There is now a war breaking out between the United States and Iran. Iran has been uh, bombing uh, United States installations over in the Middle East. President Biden has now ordered strikes against the Iranian uh, military installations in Iraq and in Syria. And there's a massive naval exercise with 32 countries, including the United States and Israel, going on in the Black Sea right now. And I'll also be talking about questions that you guys have been writing in. I'll be talking about, do our animals go with us in the rapture? What happens to animals uh, in the rapture? And do I believe that the rapture is going to occur at Rosh Hashanah this year? I'm Jimmy Evans. Welcome to The Tipping Point Show. Welcome to the Tipping Point Show, and I'm going to talk about these three terrible tribulation trumpet judgments that happen in the book of Revelation here in just a minute. Let me tell you uh, the 21-day journey. We have 21-day inner healing journey, 21-day total freedom journey on XO Now. That's our streaming platform. If you're interested in that, it really will help to set you free. Uh, if you or someone you love has got an area that you need healing or you need freedom in, it's really a blessing. Go to 21dayjourney.com forward slash tipping point. And if you'll put the promo code tipping point in there, you get 25% off your first month. It's $9 a month for XO now. And you can just stay, you know, a member for a couple of months while you go through the journey or you can stay on. It has hundreds of resources on there that will bless you. So that's 21dayjourney.com forward slash tipping point. Now in this uh, show today, I want to talk about these terrible tribulation judgments these are woes. Uh, and I'll read the scripture here in just a minute. But as these trumpets, the last three trumpets, we talked about the first four trumpets in our last show, talking about Wormwood. When the star Wormwood hits the earth, the devastation that happens during the first four trumpets. These are the last three trumpets. They're horrific. You know, the, the entire tribulation from beginning to end, ending is horrific. The last three and a half years are even worse than the first three and a half years. Most theologians believe that the trumpets and the seal judgments happen in the first three and a half years, that the bowl judgments happen in the last three and a half years, somewhere around there. And so these are horrific judgments that we're gonna talk about. But I wanna talk about, first of all, why do we even need to know about this? Because you know, if you've heard me teach for very long, I do not believe that we'll be here during the tribulation. I believe the rapture happens before the tribulation, I'll be talking questions. I have several questions I'm going to answer after the break. Uh, one of those is, do I believe that the rapture is going to happen this year in September at Rosh Hashanah? And I'll answer that. But um, why should we, not, if, if we're not going to be here, why does it matter? Because it motivates us, first of all, to live for Jesus. Is that, you know, the Bible says, he who has this hope in him purifies himself. And that means the hope of Jesus' return. When you know that Jesus is coming and you know that you look at the signs of the times that are happening around us, you know it's soon, it motivates you to live for Jesus. It also motivates you to share your faith. If you care about people around you, your friends and family members, your neighbors and people that you work with and go to school with, if you really care about them, you're going to be praying for them and you're going to take every opportunity you can to lovingly and graciously share the hope that you have within you about Jesus and hope that they receive Christ so that they don't have to go through the tribulation. When we read through these trumpet judgments here in just a minute, you'll understand anyone you care about, you do not want him, them to be here during that period of time. It's just going to be seven years of hell on earth, literally. But it also helps us not to envy the wicked. There are so many believers that you see today that are, that are emulating evil people, wicked people, whether they're movie stars or athletes or you know, whoever it might be, musicians, that they're, that they're giving into the pressure of the day. Understand when you read the book of Revelation, when you read the Bible and you read about the judgments that are coming on the earth, these people are not to be envied. These people, if they do survive the tribulation, 
Most people won't. Most people will die during the tribulation. If you're a believer, you'll probably be martyred. If you don't receive Christ now and you receive Christ during the tribulation, you will probably be martyred. So these are not people that you want to envy. These are people that you want to pity. The people that should be envied are those who know Jesus and those who are going to the marriage supper of the Lamb, not those who are going to go through seven years of the wrath of the Lamb. That's what Revelation 6 calls it, the wrath of the Lamb. Seven years of hell on earth is coming. And so the other thing is we need to be reminded this is not our home. When you read about the wormwood as an example, wormwood comes and strikes the earth decimates the earth, scorches the earth and the green grass of the earth and you know, kills a third of the, the wildlife in the sea and a third of the ships and all that stuff. This is not our home. Th this world is under judgment. And just now you see the birth pangs. It's going to be under full judgment during the, the tribulation. And so this is not our home. Heaven is our home. You don't want to put your roots d too deep down here. And I love my house. I love my wife, my family. You know, I love my life right now, but I'm willing to give all of that up. Of course, my family's going with me, but my house and all the stuff I have here on earth, it means nothing to me in comparison to Jesus. And so we just need to be reminded that when you read the book of Revelation, and by the way, the book of Revelation is the only book in the Bible that promises a blessing on those who read it. And I believe one of the reasons that there's a blessing is because it wakes you up. It wakes you up to the spiritual realities of what's going on in the world today and what's about to happen in the world. It's going to happen. It's in the Bible. It's going to happen. So let me talk about these judgments. Let me let me read you one more scripture here. This is 1 Thessalonians 5. Paul says, For they themselves declared concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Not delivers us through the wrath to come. He delivers us from the wrath that is to come. We're waiting for Jesus. We're waiting for Jesus to come from heaven and deliver us from the wrath that is to come. But when you read the book of Revelation and you understand what's going to be happening during the judgments of the tribulation, you, it makes you more appreciative of the fact that he is coming to deliver us from the wrath that is to come. And wrath is coming in the world. So let me, this is Revelation 8. We're going to begin these three terrible trumpet judgments. And this is Revelation 8, beginning in verse 13. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. The word woe means horror. Horror, horror, horror. Like the worst horror movie that you can possibly imagine, the angel is flying through heaven saying these last three trumpets that are about to sound will bring three horrors on the earth. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. If you can imagine being on the earth during that period of time. So let's talk about the first horror, the first woe. It's the fifth trumpet. This is verse 9. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven, heaven to the earth. To him, was, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And this is interesting because during the tribulation, people who are saved are going to have a seal of God on their foreheads and the locusts can't touch them. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them. And the word there, torment, means torture, to literally torture them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. Their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like the women's hair. Their teeth were like lion's teeth, so on and so forth. It says in verse 11, And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon, which means destroyer. 
One woe is past. Behold, st still two more woes are coming after these things. So again, you look at the people in the world today who are in rebellion to God. Okay, Those people who do not turn to God during the tribulation for five months, these are demons now. These are demonic powers. The, this angel falls to the earth. This is a fallen angel, possibly the devil himself. He comes. He opens the bottomless pit. These locusts come out. They can't harm believers. Okay, They can't harm the earth. But they are given the power to torture men for five months. Let me just tell you something. That's an eternity when you're being tortured. And they seek death, and they can't find it. If, if During that period of time, if you crawled up on top of a 100-story building and jumped off, you'd live. God won't let you die. That's part. Think about it for just a minute. You're, you're being tortured for five months. Can you imagine being tortured for five months? Well, they're gonna, it's going to happen to them. And they can't, during that time, men will seek death, but they can't find it. So you, what, a, what a horrific judgment. And this is what is coming upon unbelievers and people in rebellion to God. When you see all the people today in rebellion to God, don't envy those people. Pity those people. They're not cool. They're foolish. They're insane to reject Jesus during this season of grace. There's going to be grace during the tribulation to receive Christ, but it will be an extremely severe grace. And if you do receive Christ, you're probably going to die of either a judgment or be executed by the Antichrist. This is Revelation 9. Here's the second horror, the sixth trumpet. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four corners, the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released, listen, to kill a third of mankind. In, in Revelation 6, the rider on the pale horse kills a fourth of mankind. Now here another third of mankind are dead besides all the people who have died of all the other plagues. And so the, the, this, this is over half the earth's population now that's dead. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million I heard the number of them. Now, mo most theologians believe that this is a demonic army. Now, uh, I, think, I think it was John Walbert believes it's an actual army. And by the way, the Chinese, the East, they, they could muster an army of 200 million men. It'd be very difficult to muster that big of an army and move them, you know, very, very far. But uh, we see today the population in China, mostly male because of the one-child policy for many years, and so they could, in the East, India, you know, China, they could muster an army that big. But it's probably a demonic army kills a third of mankind. Okay, It says, I saw the, the horses in the vision. Those who sat up them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, sulfur yellow. The heads of the horses were like heads of lions. Out of their mouth came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tail, for their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But listen, listen, the rest of mankind who are not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk, and they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. And so... In spite of the horrific judgments that are happening here, people, these people have hard hearts, and they won't repent. Here's the, here's the seventh uh, trumpet. Here's the third woe, third horror, Revelation 11. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 out four elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great. And you should destroy those who destroy the earth. So listen, he's rewarding one group and destroying the other. The seventh angel sounds and you see this victory in heaven, defeat on the earth, victory in heaven and rewarding the righteous and punishing the unrighteous. 
I'm, I'm skipping down to verse 7 now, Revelation 12, 7. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, that's Satan, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud sound voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Listen, woe, horror to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. The third woe is the devil is cast out of heaven to the earth and he's on a, he's in a rampage. He knows he has a short amount of time. Let me say this. Why would God cast Satan out of heaven? Okay, I'll give you the answer because he doesn't want the devil crashing the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are now being prepared in the book of Revelation for the marriage supper of the Lamb to occur at the Father's house in heaven. And Satan, for whatever reason, the book of Job tells us that the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also. Not son as in man, son as in angels or fallen angels. God made Satan as Lucifer. Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28 tell us that he was created perfect until he fell. And so he is a creation of God. He does have limited access to heaven where he accuses us before God day and night. Let me tell you the good news. Jesus is there also as our advocate and high priest and intercessor. And so just as much as Satan is accusing us, Jesus is there to exonerate us and represent us. And so he's there. God is not going to allow him to stay in heaven any longer. And he throws him to the earth and here comes Satan on a rampage. So let's just review the three terrible trumpets. Five months of torture, and you cannot die when the fifth trumpet sounds. One third of mankind is killed, and Satan is thrown to the earth in a rampage. And I want to say again, you do not want to envy people who are unbelievers. One of my grandkids that goes to college, two of my granddaughters go to college, and they, they were with us a couple of weeks ago, and one of my granddaughters said, the cool thing at college is to be a rebel. And both my granddaughters are very godly, and they serve the Lord. The cool thing at college among the kids is to be a rebel. Can I just say something? That's cool right now, but that cool is going to be out the window. When you're being tormented for five months, when you're seeing a third of the people around you being killed, when you're seeing Satan, the most evil person in the universe, on a rampage on earth, do you really think that rebellion is going to be cool? And it says, even in the midst of that, they won't repent because their hearts have become so hardened. I'm saying the people that you want to envy are the people who serve Jesus Christ, the humble, the righteous, those that are living their lives for the Lord because we are going to avoid, avoid seven years of hell on earth. We're going to be at the most exquisite event in the history of the universe, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and live and rule and reign with Jesus for all eternity. Let me read Luke 21 to you, and I'll be finished. This is Jesus. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And that day, talking about His coming, come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. The snare is an animal trap. It's instant. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Just to be careful. Don't, don't get caught up in the world. Don't get caught up in the sins of the world and the way that other people are living that they, they would come upon you unexpectedly because it's going to come as a trap. See, when the rapture occurs, it occurs according to 1 Corinthians 15 in the twinkling of an eye. Instantly it occurs. It says in a moment, the word moment there is the word atomos. It means an indivisible amount of time. Instantly, the rapture is going to occur. And when the rapture occurs, instantly, everyone who didn't go up is trapped on the earth under judgment. And Jesus says, live your life ready for that day. And he says, pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape, not to endure. That's a different word. To escape 
He's delivering us from the wrath that is to come to escape how many things? All these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's the rapture. And so I'm saying to you, these are important things for us to remember in the days that we live in because I don't believe we're going through the tribulation. But if you're not a believer, if you're someone who's thumbing your nose at God and you're in rebellion to God, you're in danger. You're in grave danger because Jesus is coming and those that are living for him today may not be cool in the world to live for Jesus today, but I'm telling you in the twinkling of an eye, it's going to be the coolest thing in the whole universe. And everyone who didn't is going to be subject to the worst horrific judgments that have ever happened in the history of the world for seven years. And most people will die in the midst of it. So I want to encourage you by letting you know, we're not going to be here for that if you're a believer, but we need to be praying and living for Jesus in the time that we have left. If you're not a subscriber, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Uh, the next part of our program is for subscribers only $7 a month, $77 a year. We would love to have you as a sp subscriber. Tipping point is just part of what you get. We have articles that come out all week long on endtimes.com. Go on endtimes.com, become a subscriber. If you sign up monthly, the first month is free. And so we would love to have you. And you can see for the first month, if you like it, if you like it, stay on. If you don't, you can drop it. But if you're not a subscriber, I'm going to say goodbye to you. If you are a subscriber, stay tuned. I'll be right back. <music> 